Welcome to this demo of the Eiffel Sandbox. The Eiffel Sandbox showcases how several pipeline services and actors communicate using the Eiffel protocol and lets you as a user play around and experiment and discover what an Eiffel-enabled software pipeline might look like in your project. The Eiffel Sandbox is a set of Docker images of open source projects set up and configured using Docker Compose. In the description of this clip, you will find links to the Eiffel Sandbox project on GitHub and to other Eiffel community resources. A big thank you to Mikael Frick for helping create this demo and for setting up and maintaining the Eiffel Sandbox. First, let's clone the GitHub repository. Then we run Docker Compose up to launch all of the Docker containers. We can see them coming online now. Two of the containers are Jenkins servers with a handful of pre-configured jobs. These Jenkins servers are running plugins that enable them to send, receive and act upon Eiffel events. Three of the containers are Eiffel intelligence services, each specialized on a separate type of data. We'll return to what exactly Eiffel intelligence does in a minute. Then there's a RabbitMQ message broker container through which all the Eiffel events in the sandbox are communicated. There is also a Nexus repository manager. This is completely vanilla, even though it's perfectly possible to enable Eiffel communication in Nexus or in Artifactory for that matter, there is currently no open source implementation of that. Last but not least, there's a Vici container. Vici is a service dedicated to visualizing Eiffel event graphs. There are many, many ways in which Eiffel event data may be presented, but what Vici does is it parses events from a specific source. Here we'll pick Eiffel event repository that is also part of the sandbox, and then it dynamically renders those events and their relationships. Let's begin by looking at one of the Jenkins jobs. The EI artifact trigger job is triggered by Eiffel intelligence. It has the enable implicit Eiffel messaging checkbox ticked, which means that it will automatically send events like activity started and activity finished. If we switch over to Eiffel intelligence, we can see there's a subscription set up for it. What that means is that Eiffel intelligence will notify Jenkins and cause the job to execute whenever a certain type of artifact has achieved a certain state. These job triggers can also be parameterized, so the activated job can act intelligently on the state of the triggering artifact. Now, let's make something happen. Let's make a new job that creates an artifact and uploads it to Nexus. Actually, we're cheating a bit by not creating anything but downloading an existing artifact. For simplicity's sake, we'll use very simple curl commands. The Eiffel plugin to Jenkins also lets us send events as a build step. We can choose from a list of event types to get a template to start out from. You can author these events dynamically by injecting environment variables, but here we'll just copy paste a static example. When we run this job, we can see that the artifact is successfully uploaded to Nexus. Again, this Nexus container is not Eiffel enabled, so we're not getting any events from it at this point. Now, let us look at the event repository. Event repository is a service that stores all received Eiffel events in a MongoDB database and exposes them via a REST API so that other services like Vici can fetch them. Looking directly at the database, we can see that our Eiffel artifact created event has been stored along with the activity events sent automatically by the Eiffel Jenkins plugin. We can also explore the internal database of Eiffel intelligence. Eiffel Intelligence is similar to the event repository in that it consumes events. It doesn't store them, however, but instead builds up immutable data objects representing things like artifacts, source changes, test executions, or anything else you might be interested in from your pipeline. So what you get from Eiffel Intelligence is a data object that represents everything we have learned about a specific entity via Eiffel events. Here we can see that Eiffel Intelligence has now learned that there is such a thing as an artifact with a group ID, artifact ID and version we specified. We don't know anything more yet, however, as there haven't been any other events. But anything that references this artifact will add onto this object in real time, 
where it came from, where it's included, where and when and how it is tested, and so on. If we look at the events received so far in Vici, we see a very simple graph. It tells us that there is an artifact called generate service, which caused a job to trigger, event triggered job. Not much to look at yet, but it will get more interesting soon. Now let's create a new job in our second Jenkins container. We use two containers simply to demonstrate that this solution can be completely distributed, and you can use any technology to manage your jobs for that matter. Bamboo, GoCD, Concourse, Cron, you name it. This job will be triggered by changes in artifact state in Eiffel Intelligence. We'll make it parameterized because we want to do something with the artifact in the job. We want a parameter called JSON params, and we'll just print that to console. Now we go to Eiffel Intelligence. Let's select the Jenkins job trigger template, give it a name, and configure the rest post body. Jenkins requires a key called JSON, and in that we have a JSON params property, and dump the entire data object. We need to tell it where to send the notification, and then we specify the conditions under which notifications are to be sent. We want to be notified whenever there's a new artifact with a specified group ID, artifact ID, and version. It's important to note that this is completely agnostic as to who created the artifact or where. It might be created by a shell script or a build server in my lab or on a different continent. As long as I get that event data via RabbitMQ, it will be stored in Eiffel Intelligence and my job will be triggered. This makes for a very flexible and loosely coupled pipeline. Let's quickly remove the artifact from Nexus and rerun our dummy artifact creation job. Now we can see that the job we just created has been executed in the other Jenkins container and it has printed everything we know about this artifact we're interested in. So far we have only looked at a handful of events of only a few types, but the Eiffel vocabulary is much richer than that. So let's look at a slightly more lifelike example. Here's a simple Python script that will spam the message broker with thousands of semi-randomized events. These will be stored in the event repository, and so when we head back to Vici and hit refresh, we get a much more interesting graph. Here we can see what our pipeline actually looks like, dynamically rendered from the Eiffel events. We can see artifacts created and published, we can see activities starting and finishing, and test executions. What we see here is not individual events, but aggregations. So we can, for instance, see how often particular test executions fail. We can also zoom in and explore this data, studying trends in activity execution times and other properties we might be interested in. Going back to the event repository where Vichy gets the raw data, we can see there are now lots more events stored. Similarly, Eiffel Intelligence now knows about many more artifacts and also knows more about them. For these artifacts, we now have test executions registered and subsequent confidence levels. All of these are properties you can include in a subscription, letting you easily create jobs triggered when, for instance, a release candidate has successfully passed a particular set of tests. This concludes our demo of the Eiffel Sandbox. There is much more functionality hidden away there, and it will continue to evolve as more open source implementations of the Eiffel protocol become available. As you can see, these services and plugins make up a toolbox that lets you easily set up a polyglot, loosely connected and flexible microservice style pipeline. Don't hesitate to clone the repo and give it a spin yourself, and why not join the community and contribute to it?